In today's video, I'm going to be going over the things that I wish I knew about money way before I moved out of my parents' house. I've been on my own for several years now and I've been doing pretty good, but if I would have known these things I'm about to break down for you in this video earlier, oh man, I would be swimming in it right now. And these are things that I've never shared on this channel before, so make sure you pay very close attention. If you're not sure who I am, I'm Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, and I am the author of The Wealth Journey. And I recommend that you click the link in the description and get weekly finance tips from me straight into your email inbox. Click the link in the description and in the comment section, and you will be on your way to receiving finance tips and you'll be learning things that I wish I would have known along the way. And it'll be compounded over weeks because I send it to you every single week and you are gonna enjoy it. My primary focus is just to educate you on what you can do better financially so you can live your best life. So we're gonna jump straight into this video right now. The first thing I wish I knew about money earlier is I wish I didn't underestimate the amount of time it actually takes to save a good amount of money. When you move out, you live on your own, you have your own bills. Even if you don't have very many bills, like I just had rent, utilities, I didn't have a car note because my car was paid for in cash. So I had gas, groceries. My family helped me out with my furniture because they were super proud of me for graduating from college with honors. So I really didn't have that much to pay for. I really just had those four basic things, rent, utilities, gas, groceries. That was pretty much it. But I still had a very hard time with managing my money and putting away the amount of money I should have been able to do. I was looking up YouTube videos and watching Dave Ramsey talk about saving your first thousand dollars. And I just felt like I had a hard time doing all of that. I felt like, man, I'm never gonna be able to get to $10,000 in my savings account at this rate. I'm only saving like a few hundred dollars a month. I really didn't have a plan going into it. I really wasn't tracking my finances like I was supposed to. I just kind of felt like, well, I'm making good money and I don't have very many bills, so I should be able to make this extremely easy. But there was always something that came up and there was always something I didn't really calculate for when it came to my bills, or it was just my own carelessness, just kind of spending whatever. Oh, I got money, so I'm just spending, spending, spending. I wasn't out here crazy splurging or anything but i definitely wasn't tracking like i was supposed to and as a result i had a very hard time at first saving money had i not underestimated how difficult it can be when you already have bills it would have been a lot different because i could have put myself in a position to get better at saving while i was living with my parents so i would already have a good cushion and not even have to worry about building a savings from scratch basically another thing i wish i would have understood was the cost of living because even though I didn't have very many bills, a big chunk of my bills was my rent. And that's the significant part of cost of living. Now, luckily, I lived in a place that had a relatively low cost of living. You could get a lot for a little. Like I had a townhouse, you know, at the time, and I only paid $870 for it. But in hindsight, I could have saved $100. $150 a month on rent if I just would have went with like a single bedroom apartment. So that would have saved me a little bit and I would have felt a lot more comfortable. And I know that may not seem like a ton, but having that leeway in your budget every month, that's kind of nice to just know, okay, cool. I have like a nice cushion of $150. It's better than having like nothing. So I think it's good to have something that you save on every type of bill. And I didn't really assess the cost of living like I should have. And I was a lot better off than a lot of people are when they graduate and move into their own place by themselves because gas prices were super low. This was back in like 2017 in North Carolina. So gas prices were way, way under what they are now. Gas was like $2.24 per gallon in North Carolina back in 2017. I was already driving an economy car so your boy was doing good, but you know, I didn't take full advantage of the cost of living and save as absolute much as I could. That's where I messed up. It wasn't like a huge, huge thing because it only cost me a few hundred dollars a month. But, but knowing what I know now, I could have done some serious, serious damage with that extra money. And by damage, I mean, I could have made myself a lot wealthier. How? Well, we're about to talk about that. Something else I wish I knew before I moved out of my parents' house was what investing was, what a 401k was, what a Roth IRA is. And if this sounds like gibberish to you, don't worry, I'm going to break these things down for you. But for right now, I wish I just would have had a general sense, an idea of what investing was and that putting your money into an area 
or into something every time you get paid consistently can turn into millions over the years. I had no idea. I didn't learn about that until I was 21. It was my last class I had to take in college. It was engineering economics. I'll never forget it. And we ran this generator that showed us how much money we could expect if we based off of our yearly salary, investing just a percentage into the stock market every single year with a 4% increase. And the number that I calculated was like three something million just based off of my base salary starting from 21 all the way to 65. And it completely blew my mind because I was like, I'm pretty sure my salary is going to go up through the years, but I did it very pessimistically. I did it like if my salary never went up or anything. And by now I've doubled my salary that I had when I was 21. So what's crazy is the amount that I'm putting in my 401k now, I know is going to be more by the time I'm 65 than that number that I guessed it would be back when I was in college. So if I would have had an idea of what investing was when I was much younger, I might have thought about money a lot differently. I've always been pretty resourceful with money, but just the crazy idea that you can put your money into a company and it can grow exponentially over the years is pretty wild to me. How much money as a kid did you spend like of your own money on like Microsoft products like Xbox, you know, video games, the computers? How much money did you spend on Nikes, Jordans? How much money did you spend on iPhones or your own phone bill or whatever? So what I'm saying is it wouldn't have taken a lot. Like your average video game back then was like 50, 60 bucks. That same amount going into something like Microsoft or into a fund or something could easily grow exponentially within just a few years. And that's not with a lot of money. That's just with knowing about something when you're younger. And all I can say is now that I know quite a bit about investing and I've been doing so for years now, looking at my investment account, it's a good feeling looking back on that, knowing that sometimes based on how the day is going in the stock market, I could actually make more in a day in the stock market than I make at work. That's a good feeling. This is what they don't teach you in school. And for some reason, I don't know why. The only reason I learned it in school was, first of all, I learned it in college. Second of all, I learned it in a class that was about economics that is tied directly to the stock market. So it makes sense that we would learn about that stuff. But had I not taken that class, I wouldn't have learned about that stuff until way later. And with that said, um, a big piece of advice I would give you if you are living alone is no matter what, make sure you're contributing to your 401k at work. Make sure you're doing that the moment it becomes available to you. Some companies make you wait till you're there for like a few months. Some companies make it available right away. Either way, figure out what your company's rules and regulations are when it comes to your 401k. Start investing and then ask them if they have a match program. Usually they'll tell you, but some companies don't be wanting to give you that good information. So just ask them, do y'all have a match program? Okay, cool. At what percentage do y'all match? And all that means is once you give a certain percentage, like let's say 4%, you contribute 4% of each paycheck to a 401k, that's when they match you 50 cents per every dollar, which means every $100,000 you put in, they throw in an extra $50,000 just because you put money in your 401k. That's free money that you don't want to turn down. In the future, you will be very, very happy and you'll be thanking yourself. Now, that was something I luckily did know before I moved out of my parents' house. But what if I would have known everything else? What if I would have known about investing in individual stocks and understanding what prices are good to get into the individual stocks that could then give me an even bigger return than something like my 401k? I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know about so many things. But the beauty in that is that I learned my lesson and I can now teach you about these things that I wish I knew before I moved out of my parents' house. So if you're in a position that's pretty good, where you're making pretty good money, because I mean, let's face it, if you're living by yourself, you're doing well enough to be able to support yourself. And hopefully you've assessed the cost of living. And even if you haven't moved out yet and you're just watching this video, take every piece of advice that I'm giving you to heart because I'm telling you, once you actually factor these things in, you're gonna be able to come into it with a plan. Because I didn't come into my personal financial life with a plan. I didn't come into my adult life living by myself with the real hard dead set financial plan. I did not. I didn't have like, okay, I'm going to save this much a month. I didn't have this is my breakdown for all my bills and this is how much I'm definitely spending every single month. I was just willy nilly. I was like, well, I make good money. So I know I'm not going to go through all of it every month, which I didn't because I was fairly disciplined, but... Discipline 
has to be paired with knowing a little something. If you know how to budget and you know how to save, cool. But what if you know how to automate your savings? What if you also know, oh, this is how you invest. Oh, I can make money on the side investing. Cool. Oh, this is how much I should give to my 401k so I can make sure I have the maximum amount by retirement. Oh, this is how I look at the cost of living so I make sure I'm not spending too much because there's cheaper options that are of similar quality out here when it comes to like apartments and stuff like that. There's a ton of different ways you can go about it, but I really wish I knew about these things so much sooner because I'm telling you, I would be a lot richer. Oh, here's a kicker. Here's a big one that I think a lot of people are going to eventually empathize with and really understand once they've started to go through what I'm about to say. So check this out. I wish I knew that, yes, you work to make a living, but you don't live to work. So like if you're passionate about your job and you don't mind working crazy hours and you're doing it on your own accord, that's totally different than what I'm about to talk about. I'm talking about you working for a company like I used to work for that forces you to work crazy amounts of hours, like 72, 68 hours per week working on their dream, working on their improvements, working on everything that they want to do while they go back to the house and sit up on the couch watching TV, not doing nothing, and then look at their phone every five minutes, texting you, asking what's going on, running you to the freaking ground. Like, I went through that, and I went through that abuse for a long time. It seemed like a long time. It was only like a year and nine months, but I went through it for that long of a time because I really thought, well, this is how I make a living. Like, I don't really have a choice right now, but I did have a choice. I didn't realize that companies, some companies, not all of them, can actually work you to death. I, people actually died that used to work side by side with me by getting worked to death. They developed health problems. They weren't going to the doctor. They weren't being checked out because they were at work all the freaking time. They weren't eating right. They were just picking up whatever on the way to work and on the way from work because they didn't have the time to cook or to get anything healthy or to sit down somewhere because all they had to worry about was getting home, going to sleep so they can work and hopefully get enough sleep. But we didn't get enough sleep. I didn't realize I didn't have to tolerate any of that crap. I didn't realize that there were other opportunities all around the world. And they kept dangling that carrot over my head talking about some, hey, we're paying you good. You should be happy. You're, you're young. You're, you're 21, 22 years old. You're making this kind of money. You're making like 80 grand a year. Come on. Now you should be happy about this. You should be happy that we're throwing this extra money at you. Like they're doing me a favor. Like, no, I'm doing my work in exchange for money. That's how that works. It's not like you just handed me money because I'm a good person. That's not how that went. But they try to do the guilt trip thing. Come on, where are you going to go and make it this kind of money at your age? No other place is going to try to pick you up. You don't, you don't have the experience yet. You're getting your experience with us. Come on. And that really made me feel some type of way because I actually believed it at first. Until I actually sat back and understood, wait a minute. I have the leverage in this. You need me. I'm one of the few that you got. And at one point, I was the only one they had on day shift. So there was one of us on days, one of us on nights. And I'm not going to get too into that story because I made other videos about that topic specifically. So if you want to check it out, definitely check that out. It's good. It's good information. It's a very entertaining story if I do say so myself, even though I went through a lot of pain to be able to give that story. But... The bottom line is you don't have to tolerate crap. Now, what I will say is don't do like I was about to do and just up and quit without any other options because I was genuinely about to do that. But my mom was like, nah, <laughs> nah, I told my grandfather about it. He was like, nah, don't uh, -uh. stay the course. Just just a few more months, just one more month. And he kept saying that every single time. And then it was one more month turned into like 10 more months and, you know, it just kept going and going and going. But I had to look for other options while I was doing that. And sometimes it might take a while, but if you keep doing it, something is going to line up for you. I wasn't going off of hope and, you know, dreams saying, oh, I hope this random company hits me up on LinkedIn. Like, no, I was out here really looking for stuff. 
and eventually I got something else. So it's a double-edged sword. Don't tolerate crap from your job. Don't tolerate disrespect, mistreatment, being overworked. But at the same time, once you realize these things are happening, start looking for something else, line something else up, because that's what's going to be best for your finances. Because if you don't, what will happen is it takes a longer time to be onboarded to a job. Like even if you quit your job today and you get hired by another job tomorrow, you still got to go through a certain set of a process. You have to go through a background check. And then if you're in a different state or something, you actually have to move over there. And then it actually takes them a while to get everything through HR to process everything, make sure your pay is correct and all that fun stuff. And you get all your benefits and all your packages, your 401k, your accounts, all that stuff has to be set up and it can take a while to do. So it could take 30 days. It could take 60 days. Sometimes it could take 90 days. And I don't know if you want to go that long without getting a paycheck. Even if you cash out your PTO, like you, that's like two weeks that you're going to buy yourself. But like I said, 90 days is what you could be looking at. So make sure you're smart about how you do those things. Lastly, I wish I knew how important it was to invest in myself early on, and I should have known because I invested in myself when I went to college, and that had a very big payoff, and I wish I would have known, like, well, what if I invest in, like, an online course to understand, like, how to code or, you know, just how to develop a website, how to do other things, and then knowing when to outsource certain things for my business, because I always knew I was going to be a businessman. I've always been a businessman, like, at work, but I knew I always wanted to be one outside of work, too, and I just wish I would have known earlier, like, hey, it's okay to take this risk and set aside this percentage of money every year and, and put some money into yourself and really see what the outcome can be from that but i kind of had a little bit of self-doubt going on and i was like i don't know and then i was like i'm trying to get my savings right but it goes back to not having a plan so if i can give you any piece of advice for this video make sure that you have a plan if you have a plan and you stick to it you will be unstoppable sure you might have to tweak some things here and there but who doesn't you know what i mean you have to do that all the time multi-billion dollar corporations have to readjust their plans that's okay but Sticking to a plan that gives you discipline, that gives you confidence, that gives you outcomes, that gives you everything you will ever need out of life. So I would just say, make sure you have a plan. Write something down and just see how far you can go with it. I do have other videos. As a matter of fact, after this video, check out my video, How to Master Saving Money. I promise you, you are going to have everything you need to make whatever type of master plan you want to make. I give you all the tools right there. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know that my moving out videos and moving out of your parents' house videos, those are extremely popular. They are my highest performing videos. But first and foremost, this is a personal finance channel. And the whole point of moving out is you have to have your finances together or else you're gonna have to move back in with your parents. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. And I hope that you got some good nuggets from this and that you actually apply them to your life and have the best life you can possibly live going forwards. But anyway, this is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.